and good morning. Good morning. <coughs> Come on in the room. I'm just getting set up. I am hoping that you can hear me well today. Let me know as you're coming in if you can hear me. Um, yeah, let me know. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Good morning. <laughs> Shar, can you let me know if you can hear me okay? I'm waiting for somebody to get on so I can know. Let me know how the sound is, if you can hear me okay. How does everything sound? It sounds good. Do I need to turn the volume up? Is the volume good? I just want to make sure before we get started. How y'all doing today? Pray everybody is good. Turn it up some? Okay, let's try that. All right, how does that sound? Does that sound okay? Let me know. Throw some hearts up when the sound is good. Can you throw some hearts up in the chat when the sound is good? Perfect. All right, thank you. All right, now we can get started. Good morning, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to the Morning Manna Heart to Heart Conversations with God and me. So glad you're here. Uh, hello to my Instagram fam. Hello to my YouTube fam. And um, my soon TikTok fam. Good morning. Good morning. Good day whenever you uh, get this message. Um, I want to pray so that we can jump on in and, and we can get what, we, what we're supposed to get today. Amen? All right, let's go. Daddy, we thank you so much for this amazing day that you have made. We thank you for who you are and all that you've done. We thank you for just being such a good father. You are absolutely amazing. There is no one like you in all of the earth. And for this, we give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you glory. We give you honor. Father God, as we consult you today, as we uh, bless your name today, I pray, Father God, that you would minister to us on today. I pray that you would speak to us exactly what it is that we need to hear on today. I pray that you would speak to us collectively and individually. I pray, Father God, that there is a word for somebody that will be watching today. I pray, Father God, that you would minister to every person right where they are. I pray, Father God, that you would help us to hear your voice and your voice only. I pray that it'll be none of me, but all of you. Speak Holy Spirit, for we are listening. We are in great expectation, and we are ready to hear from you. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Speak, Daddy. Use me today. I decrease completely so that you can speak to and through me and then back to me. We're listening. We're ready to receive. If you're ready to receive this morning, type I'm ready to receive and then say it verbally out of your mouth. I am ready to receive. I am in great expectation, Father. Come on, tell him. I'm in great expectation. I want to pray for those that may need healing this morning. Father God, we pray for those that may that need your healing this morning. You know exactly who they are. God, I pray that you would touch their bodies this morning. I pray, Father God, wherever there is pain, wherever there is discomfort, wherever there is dis-ease, wherever there is disease, I pray, Father God, that you would remove it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray that you would restore. I pray, Father God, that, that for divine healing in the name of Jesus restoration to every cell, the blood, every fiber and tissue, every bone in the name of Jesus, to the heart, to the kidney, to the lung, in the name of Jesus, 
to the thyroid, in the net, whatever the situation, to the digestive system, hallelujah, uh, to the nervous system, God. I pray for those that may be dealing with diagnoses that does not come from you. We declare and decree on today, and we come into agreement for their healing in the name of Jesus, because your healing is the children's bread. And so for every believer that is on this live, every believer that will watch this replay, Father, we thank you for healing. We thank Thank you for healing and not just physical healing hallelujah but we thank you for emotional healing we thank you for financial healing we thank you for mental healing we thank you for healing spiritually for those that have experienced church hurt which is really people hurt because people are in the church it ain't really the church's fault it's the people that's in the church God I pray that you will heal them even from that I pray that you will heal them from mama and daddy issues from traumas that they had in their life, oh, Rosata, that you would heal them from past traumas, current traumas, things that have been happening in their lives that they have not yet been able to shake. God, we trust you, <laughs> sir. We trust you to be a bomb in Gilead today. So wherever they may be, whatever it is that they may be dealing with, God, heal, set free, and deliver. We thank you on today that not only are they healed, not only are they set free, not only are they delivered, but they are made whole. Mm -hmm. They are made whole. You are whole in Jesus' name. That is your declaration. No matter what you got going on, no matter what you see, no matter what you're feeling, that is your declaration. I am healed. <laughs> I am healed because healing is my portion. You're not going to be healed. You're already healed. And we receive it. We declare and decree it and send it into the earth. As your word says, whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth shall be loosed. And I hear that, God. We pray for restoration. Come on now. We pray for restoration. We pray for restoration in families. We pray for restoration in marriages. We pray for restorations with, with parental relationships. Restoration in the name of Jesus. I bind that headache in the name of Jesus. That headache that you've been having that you can't seem to, to get rid of, I bind it now in the name of Jesus. I, I declare and decree that you have a sound mind. Somebody, you going warring in your mind. Hey, I declare and decree on today that you have a sound mind. A sound mind. A sound mind. Mm -hmm. You have a sound mind. Say that. I have a sound mind. Mm -hmm. I have a sound mind. Come on. I have a sound mind. Rosa. I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. Come on, say that. I have a sound mind. Mm -hmm. Healing is my portion. Mm -hmm. I have a sound mind. I will not lose my mind. Uh -uh. As a matter of fact, I am walking in a greater level of guidance, a greater level of understanding, a greater level of wisdom, a greater level of insight. I'm walking in a greater level. Mm -mm, I'm not going to lose my mind. The devil is a lie. I'm not going to lose my mind. Because <laughs> my mind is bound to the mind of Christ Jesus. I have a sound. Come on, Darlene. I have a sound mind. Come on, Alberta. I am healed. I am restored. I am whole. I am delivered and set free. I'm not waiting for it. I already am, for I am who he says I am. <laughs> I am. Come on. Come on. Open up your mouth and declare, I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm well. Jesus, I'm healed, I'm whole, and I'm well. Amen? That's it, and that's all. <laughs> Glory to God. God, we thank you. We thank you that you've all, you're already here. You already done showed up. Thank you, sir. We welcome your presence. We welcome you, Daddy. We welcome you, sir. We welcome you. We welcome you, sir. Hallelujah. We welcome you. Come on, bless his name. For he is worthy to be praised. Amen? Amen. Good morning, y'all. Good morning again. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. I'm so, listen. God gave me this word. You know, those of you that have been rocking and rolling with me for a minute, you know that, that God speaks to me in my bathroom. It's something about my bathroom. It's a nice-sized bathroom. 
and I can move around in there, but he gets me, baby, in that bathroom, and when I get in that shower, especially after I come home, I want to I wanna encourage you to do something. I want to encourage you to create routines in your life. What I am noticing is that as I create these routines, as I get, as I become more intentional about my day, come on, as I become more intentional about my day, I am seeing things move in a way that I have not seen them move before. Let me explain it to you. Let me explain before I go into what we're talking about today. When you are intentional about God, he becomes more intentional about you. Not that, you're, not that you're not already intentional, but it's just something, I believe, that moves the heart and the hand of God when you place him first. When you begin to say, God, listen, I can't do nothing without you. I need you. God, I know I got all this other stuff going on, but God, I need to give you my first fruit, the first fruit of my day. Come on. I need to give you the first lips of my day. I need to give you the first praise, the first thank you, the first good morning, the first happy Hello. The first God, I need you. God, I love you. God, I, I, I want to serve you. God, I bless you. I need to give you the first of my day, right? So I have been getting up at 430. It's been a struggle because I'm not necessarily what you call a morning person. I'm a day person. I'm wide open in the day. After about 10 o'clock, I'm good and ready to do some um, shucking and mucking and moving and trooping, honey, babe. I'm ready to get ready. And you call me before 10, I, I'm available, but I might not be all the way together. So the Holy Spirit has been challenging me because I have been I have been uh, fasting this week, and um, I I have been really in a place where like I'm for real, for real intentional about God. Like I've been intentional about God before, but God has been showing me some things. God began to really deal with me before the end of 2022 about being intentional. I don't know if you've come up with a word for this year for yourself. I, listen, I implore you, I, I, I beseech you, I, I encourage you to come up with a word for this year that you can put in your eye gates, that you can have before you, that you will begin to meditate on and walk out in your life. So last year my word was intentional and my word will remain intentional until I am intentional in every area of my life on a consistent, committed level. Does that make sense? See, this is what God said to me. God said to me, Jacina, this is what is happening with my children. My children, they are always looking for something new. Every time the new year comes, they want a new word. They want a new scripture. They want a, they want a, a new prophetic, what this year is going to be. Tell me what 2023 is going to bring. Do this, do that. And God said, I gave them a word last year. As a matter of fact, I gave them a word in 2021. I even gave them a word in 2020, 2019. And what has happened is they have have not taken me at my word so therefore they have seen my word they have not seen my word come to pass and what is happening Jacina, is they are thinking that I didn't move well there are some things that I cannot do unless they get involved there is a partnership that I am looking for from my children so that I can give them the exceedingly abundantly above all they can ask for but they they, they miss this part it is not going to happen until there's a power that worketh in you. Come on, somebody say in you. Yep. There is a power that worketh in you that God is saying, I am going to give you those things that you have been praying for, believing for, but I'm only going to give it to you at the degree and the level that you begin to work that thing out in your life. So the reason why I'm acknowledging the fact that God has been teaching me about these routines he said, Jacina Marlisa, there is one thing that you do. He said, you will start a thing, like many of you. You'll start a thing. He said, but this year, come on, somebody say this year. This year and going forward, I don't want you to just start something. I need you to start it and finish it. I need you to start the thing, and then I need you to be committed with bringing it to its completion, right? Because everything that God did, he's completed. He said, God said, and then he said, and, and the evening and the morning were the first day. God said, this year, come on, 
This year, Shanti, come on, this year, Chandra, I need you to get serious about me. I'm telling you, if you slide over there to Jeremiah 29 and 12 and 13, because I know you know 11. Everybody knows 11, right? I know the thoughts and plans that God has for me. They're good and not evil to give me a future and a hope, right? Everybody knows that. But God says, see, this is the problem. You stop at 11. You don't keep moving to 12 and 13. Come on. I need you to look. Come on. Let's go there. Let's go there. I already know it, but I want you to go there with me. Come on. Let's roll. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. you go. Let's go. Let's go. you always do. Come on. Come on. Let's go. to 12 and 13. We're going we're gonna to look at 11. Come on. Let's go ahead. Look at 11. Uh-huh. Yep. I need to get my eyes, y'all. Ain't no need to play around with it, baby. Ain't no need to play around with it. It is what it feels, so we're going to make it do what it do. <laughs> Here we go. 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. I, I, I want you to listen. I'm re reading out of the New Living Translation, okay? In verse 12, it says, In those days when you pray. Those days are right now. Come on. Come on, those days are right now. Thank you, Sean, for putting the NIV up. Those days are right now. He says, in those days when you pray, I will listen. He says, first of all, when you start praying, I'm going to listen. This is why I am, I am really encouraging you to get up early. I, I, I've been reading. I've been reading a lot lately. I've been, I've been in a different place lately. I'm telling you, something happened when I turned 50. Something beautiful. Let me just stop saying something happened. Something beautiful happened to me when I turned 20. The way that I see things, the way that I, I look at things, my perspective changed, right? And so, so, so I look now, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I've always loved the Lord, right? I've, al I've always uh, served him. I've always had a heart for him. But it's like something was renewed in me. Like I, like I got a different fire in me. And I, I, I'm, I'm at the place now, I want to know what his plans are, right? I know what I want. We all know what we want. But this year, I want to know what he wants. God, what are your thoughts? What are your plans towards me? And I, I, I've taken the time to sit with him. Let me tell you, I ain't answering my phone. If you calling me and I'm not answering, I'm sorry. If you texting me and I'm a little slow in responding, I'm sorry. I'm telling you, I, I, I told y'all in 2022, 2023 is going to be all about me. It's, it's really all about me. No shade, no, I ain't, I ain't hating on nobody, I ain't got nothing against you. I love you, boo. I'm, listen, I'm here for you, but my here for you this year is going to be here for you more in prayer than any conversation that we're going to have. I got to get me right. I'm, I'm working on me. I'm, I'm at a place of contentment in my life where I'm good. I feel good. I believe I look good. You know, I'm good. And I'm not concerned with the outer. I'm more concerned with the inner. What's going on inside of me? Because what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to keep out being out here saying that I love the Lord and that I'm living for the Lord and that he's my first love and that he's my everything. Y'all know, especially from the Baptist Church, I want to thank the Lord who's the head of my life. Child, boom, he down there at the foot because that's the last thing you see. That's the last thing you're dealing with but by the time you do your whole day. Oh, Lord, uh-uh, he's first, right? And so what I've been doing is I've been seeking him about his plan for my life this year. Most of us, we just get up and we just, all right, whatever the day brings, that's what I'm going to do. Whatever the day brings, okay, so that's it. We are so out of order. God says, I need you to seek me early. I need you to seek me and ask me to order your steps today. I need you to seek me, and I need for you to get to a place where I'm all you want. I need you to get to a place where you hunger and thirst for me and for my word and for my righteousness. For too long, we as believers have been out here living shady lives, but we want God to bless us with sunny blessings. Baby, that ain't going to happen. We out here saying we love the Lord, but our actions are showing, baby, we, we, we double-minded. We two-faced it. We lukewarm. Mm -mm. God is saying... When are you going to come up? Whenever you decide you want to come up. Because I'm already up. I'm just waiting for you to come up. When you decide that you want to give me more. 
when you decide that you're going to sacrifice more, when you decide that you're going to lay more on the altar, when you decide that you're going to die to more, when you, when you decide that you're going to be intentional about putting me first, I'm telling you, your whole life going to change. Baby, I get up at 4.30, I brush my teeth, wash my face, I do not go into the Lord's presence with no um, dirty mouth and dirty eyes. No, ma'am. I get up, I get myself cleaned up, and I go in there. Sometimes, this week I'm fasting from my coffee, but I'll get a cup of coffee or I will get my water. I will sit down, get my stuff out. I do not do it in my bed anymore. He corrected me on that. JC, to get out of this bed. I need you to go in the living room. I need you to go in another room. So now, until I get my office fixed, my living room, that has become my, my place of worship. I have this special place on my couch that I sit. And so I, I, got, I get my books out. I get, I get my, uh, my tablet, because on my tablet, I have no social media, nothing, nothing on my tablet. What God told me is, Jacina, I need you to, to get out my Bible, the, the, the Bible Bible. There's something different about when I read this and then I read it digitally. Now, I use my tablet to digitally read the Bible so that I can look up different translations of what he's speaking about. When I tell y'all I'm so hungry right now for the word of God, ooh, I love, when I, ooh, I love me some him. Oh, ooh, these times in the morning. Baby, I never thought I would say this, but these times in the morning with God have just been amazing. Y'all better get it in your life. I'm telling y'all better get y'all better get this in your life. No, let's go. Twelve. I, so many words. Can we slow down, Dan? Can we slow down? Cause are you going real fast? Okay. In those days when you pray, I will listen. Thirteen. Jeremiah. I'm in Jeremiah. If you look for me wholeheartedly, that means with your whole heart. Not halfway coming in there. When you look for me, like you look for them car keys when you lose them. <laughs> when you start looking for God, like you looking for that cell phone, like some of y'all just, y'all don't even go to the bathroom without them cell phones. You just a mess. I said, when you start looking for me the way that you look for that cell phone, when you, when you start giving me the same time that you give social media, mm -hmm. it's quiet up in this Baptist church. It's quiet up in this Baptist church. Y'all know I got to play my piano. It's quiet, it's quiet up in this Baptist church. Baptist church, oh, it's quiet up in this Baptist church. Yes, it is. It's quiet up in this Baptist church. Listen, you got to understand and you got to know that when you take your time and you set time apart to spend time with God, God, God is gonna, He's gonna meet you right where you are. He, he, as a matter of fact, He's been waiting for you. He's been saying, "What you been waiting on? I've been waiting for you. Come on in." When you deliberately get up and you say, God, I'm going to put you first. I, be I believe God said, hold up, hold up, y'all, hold up. My, my daughter, look at, look at my daughter, look at my son. He says, when you come and you start seeking me, you praying, and you seek me with your whole heart. Listen to what he says. He says, you will find me. God says, I'm not about to play no, you know, cat and mouse game with your baby. He said, I have been chasing you all your life. And I promise you, when you come looking for me, not only are you going to find me, I'm going to be waiting for you. And I'm going to answer your prayers. That's what God said. This is why he's saying, you got to get serious. You got to get committed. You got to get a routine. When I get in that shower, this is leading me to our topic today. When I get in that shower, I come home from work, baby, I shut it all down. I go, I get home, I got a whole playlist on my phone. I got different playlists for the shower. And I get in the shower, 
and I listen to my playlist. And when I'm in that shower, baby, the Holy Spirit, he gets to speaking to me. And the other day, this is what he said. I need somebody to type. What he said, Jay? What he said, Jay? I just need you to type that. I just need to make sure you're listening and you're with me. I came to bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. I came to bless his name. Bless his name. His wonderful name. That's right, Charlotte. Proverbs. That's where you need to go. That's, that's, that's where you need to be at right now in this time of year. Come on. I got me three. All I need is two or three witnesses, baby, and we're going to make this thing do what it do. God said to me, listen to me. Now, mind you, this is after I have been spending this committed time in prayer and in the word with God. It's like I'm hearing him. He, he just keeps dropping, dropping nuggets, dropping wisdom, dropping all these gems, right? So I've been praying lately about my connections because he's been dealing with me about this year. You cannot afford to be connected to just know anybody. I need you to listen to me because I'm going to talk to you about 20 minutes about these connections. Who you're connected with is going to either take you up or they're going to bring you down. There's a possibility that you can even remain stagnant. <laughs> I'm going to say what I hear because I hear him and I'm going to say it. God said many of you, there, there, are, there, 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 there are a few of you that are listening to me right now and you are frustrated in your marriage because you are wanting to grow but your spouse is bringing you down. Like they're not growing, they're not moving. Like they, 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 they're, they're just comfortable living a plain old, um, either, either they're unsaved or they don't have a relationship with God life. I, I love it when I when I meet a potential suitor and the suitor says, you know, I'm a Christian. I said, brother, that don't mean nothing to me that you're a Christian. That don't that means nothing to me. Do you have a relationship, sir? Because most most uh, a lot of these people that's out here saying they're Christians, they they got situationships. They in a situationship with God. They don't have a relationship with God. Y'all better pay attention. And there are people in your life. Romantic, platonic, family, co-worker, whatever, whatever type of connection you want it to be. They are in your life and they have a situationship with the father and not a relationship. That's the first nugget he gave me. The problem with that is when you go to them or when you hang around them, you are not getting what you need from them from a spiritual perspective because they don't have one. Ooh, baby. I need to be writing this stuff in a book. They cannot help you, baby. You're looking for people to help you that's not trying to help themselves. Baby! Ah! Did you hear that? He just said, you're looking for people to help you you're looking for people to affirm you, to encourage you, to support you, to push you. That ain't even doing it for themselves. Baby, their perspective is off. They got perception and not perspective. We talked about that last week. Perception is when you see from, from your from your lens. You see, you see from, from your point of view. Perception is when you see from his angle, from his point of view. Perception is usually is usually negative. You usually unbalanced and but perspective is, listen, it's blessed up. God says, these individuals, they are not seeking me. <laughs> okay, I'm, finna, I'm, I'm getting ready to bring it to you raw and real. Baby, this camouflage, it's something about when I wear this camouflage, it'd be like, it's about to be, it's about to go down. I'm just going to tell you exactly what I hear, and then I'll try to help bandage up the wounds when I'm finished. All right, you ready? God says, you already know who they are. You are wasting your time staying connected to people that you already know are not going to pour into your life. As a matter of fact, they are leeches. They come and they take, 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 take. And you're walking around 
frustrated, aggravated, agitated, mad, some of you angry, some of you, you're moody, you're, you're unbalanced, because you keep allowing these people to take from you, and they are not giving back. Basically, you're, you're in the negative, you're in the red. And you will not create boundaries so that they will stop taking. You just keep giving. You just you just keep giving. No, ma'am. Mm. That's got to stop. You have got to look at those that you are connected to, baby, from the very closest to you all the way out. Even Jesus had different connections. He had the crowd, then he had a few that followed, then he had his 12, and then he had his three. You better pay attention. Some of you have let too many people get close to you, and you're wondering why you're not moving forward at the level and the rate that you know you need to be moving forward. And it's because of who you're connected to. Let me go ahead and break this other nugget on you. I don't want to say that. <laughs> Guys, okay, God, okay, because I can't get I can't get whipped because I won't say what he's telling me to say to you. This is the other nugget that God, that God just said. And you won't disconnect from him because you are more concerned about the longevity of the relationship rather than the uh uh rather than the, the quality of the relationship. Come on, come on. God says, you are more concerned with the longevity, how long you've been connected, how long we've been friends, how long we've known each other. You are so caught up in, well, we've been friends since we were, since we were in, in elementary school, and what has he or she done for you lately? What, what, where have they taken you? When you're around them, do they stir up your spirit or your flesh? Baby! That's the seed word, bitch. <laughs> Somebody. Did you hear what? When you are around this individual. Now, this is a whole word right here. When you are around this individual, these individuals, do they stir up your spirit or do they stir up your flesh? Baby, if they stir up that flesh, you know who sent them. And my question to you is, why are they still there? Why are you still hanging on to them? Why are you still connected to them? What is your problem? Because you obviously got one. You, something ain't right. That, look at your connections and you will see where you are in the realm of the spirit or not. Just look at them. It's clear. Do the bulk of your friends, do they lead you here or here? Where they leading you, baby? Are they saying, are they calling you all the time, want to gossip and all this kind of carrying on? And you talking? Even if you, I heard you, I heard you. Even God said, even if you're not talking back, you're listening. So that means you're part of the conversation. Woo! Let me say it again. Woo, baby. Baby, God said, I know you think you spoty, you think you all of that with your arrogant self, but if they calling you and they gossiping about somebody, they saying a bunch of foolery, and even though you're not saying anything, you're not, you're not engaging in the conversation with your words, you're engaging in it with your heart. Why? Because you're still on the phone and you're listening. So it's going into your, it's going into your spirit whether you think so or not. You're a part, you're, yeah, you're part of the conversation. Are these people an asset or a liability? Are they costing you anything? Is your marriage more fruitful? Are you a better wife, a husband? Are you a better mother, father? Are you a better employer, employer or employee? Are you a better believer? Is your walk different? Are you still doing the same stuff you was doing? Or has your walk changed? Your walk with the Lord? Are you? Wh wh how is your life when you look at your connections, what does your life look like? That's, that's, that's what I'm asking you. What's your, what's your life looking like?
somebody's got to ask you these questions and it might as well be who me because I'm, I'm not afraid to ask you I'm not afraid to, to poke you because a hit dog will holler Throw some lights up for my own self. <laughs> oh, I can't get it. God, like, stop it. <laughs> A hit dog will holler, boo. Okay. Next nugget. This is the one that about had me fall in the shower. The Holy Spirit said, Jacina, when people come, I'm just going to use me because it, it looks like y'all might be in your feelings, so I'm just going to, I'm going to say it to me. He said, Jacina Marlisa, he says, I need you to look at your connections and I need you to see who are, who are leading you in the flesh or who are leading you in the spirit. That's the first thing. Then he said, I need you to look at your connections going forward. And I need you, when anyone comes in your life, you're going to ask the following questions. Not necessarily to the individual, but you're going to ask them to yourself. You're going to bring these questions. You're going to ponder these questions in your prayer time. Right? He said, I want you to ask yourself, who sent you? Did God send this individual or did the enemy send this individual? Who, who sent them? Right? The second thing you're going to ask is, God, why are they here? Why are they here? Because whatever happens in your life, God has allowed it. So that means they're there for some reason. What we do is when people come into our lives, we just automatically begin to place them in categories. There are categories for people. When you meet them, they're first, of course, strangers. You have to determine whether you're go they're going to remain a stranger or if you are going to allow them to become now an acquaintance. Then they will move from acquaintance to a friend. That could be a distant friend from a distant friend to a close friend. Then, if it is uh, some type of romantic situation, they then can move from a friend to a potential mate. Then they move from there to a spouse. Some of them may move to a mentor. Some of them may move um, to a prayer partner. You've got to ask God, why is this person here? Now, let me tell you the bomb he dropped on me, and this is why I almost fell in the shower. I be telling y'all all my, I, I be feeling like I'm telling y'all all my business, but God be like, it's, 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 you got to stop. It's, it's your testimony, Jason. It's not your business. That's the world's talk. That's the world's talk. This is your testimony. This is part of your testimony. So a particular person flashed in my face. I'm, I'm about to be a thousand percent transparent, right? This particular person flashed in my face. And I know what happened. Uh-uh, I ain't telling that part. Okay, so a particular person <laughs> flashed in my face. <laughs> ah! And God said to me, this was this was like about three years ago, right? God said to me, Jacina, you did not even ask me about this individual. This was the last individual that I called, you know, I was thinking I was getting serious with before the, the, the last guy that I, I mentioned a, a while back, a couple days, weeks ago, whatever. Anyway, God said, you all were intimate. Let me just bring it on home, help somebody. Because, see, them secrets, that, that's what I have you out here. Shame. See, the enemy can't say nothing about me because I'll say it about myself. He don't, he, don't get to, he don't get to put my news out there because I, I will tell you what, what I got going on myself. I'm not afraid because I know who I am, and I know my walk with the Lord. So he said, you slept with this individual, 
and you were not supposed to sleep with it. You all were not supposed to sleep together. But because this individual did not have a relationship with me, they had a situationship. And you did not discern that. You found yourself caught up with this individual when I brought this individual into your life to be a friend. You all were not supposed to be intimate. That was not... That is not your husband. That was not your husband, your spouse. And I need to talk to somebody right now because I know God is having me share this for a reason. Listen here, honey. Many times as singles, we get caught up in the desire to be married that the first person that comes along, especially if they're a good person now, baby, especially if they're good, they solid, like, you know this person, you, you, you can see good things in this person, you can see yourself being with this person in a long-term situation, right? You automatically, if you do not stay connected to the Father and submit this desire to him, I'm telling you because I did. I believe because I desire to be married and because I had not yet become intentional about God in this area of my life, I, 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 I would kind of like uh, cross the line. I would cross the line a little bit. Now I wouldn't be over here just wilding out, but I'd be like, oh, oh shoot, oh God, God, like I do a little slip. I don't fall so much, so he's like, I'm falling and I can't get up. No, I don't be doing all of that, but I may slip up. God said the slip ups that you had, Jay, you wouldn't have had those slip ups had you came to me and asked me, why is this individual here? So this is what he said, and I'm gonna bring it back to whole group, because that was for, that was for uh, independent teaching, one-on-one. Now I'm gonna bring it back whole group. So this is what happens, right? When a person comes in your life and we do not consult God, what happens is when we place that person in the wrong position, we do not get the fullness of the reason why they came. There are people that will come into your life. They are coming for one of two reasons. They're coming for a lesson, to teach you a lesson, or they're coming to be a blessing. One of the two. And usually, they're coming to be a blessing. They're coming to bless you in some area of your life. But if you do not put them in the proper position, if you try to jump them from stranger to lover, if you jump them, if you move this individual from being a friend, you know, a distant friend to your best friend, like if, if you get this out of order and you move through these positions, through these placements too fast, what will happen is, you will now have to go back to square one. And you are now going to have to learn a lesson instead of that person coming into your life to be a blessing. I'm going to tell you how you know. Can you think of a person that was either in your life right now or in your past, and it started out, it was good, but then it went sour? You was like, dang, what happened? Like, Oh, you enjoy seeing them, talking to them, being with them, connecting with them, whatever it was, whether it's platonic, romantic, business, that matter, church friend, whatever. Y'all used to go out to dinner at night, whatever you used to do. It could be person of the same set, opposite set, that matter. Whoever this individual is, y'all got your individual, you got your individual, throw up some likes, some hearts, throw up something in the chat. I need to know you with me. I feel like I'm out here by myself, although it, it's, it's all right. Throw something up in the chat. Throw some, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Dun, 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 dun. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Dun, 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 dun. People from every nation. And so I see my one daughter throwing up some hearts. Come on, okay, I see somebody else. I think that might be um, Johnny. All right, anybody else listening? All right, here we go. So when you 
meet the, when you when you this person that you have in your head, right? Where are you now? Are you all good? Are you are you close? Are you are you are you still working on, you know, where is this person? Because sometimes what <laughs> I'm telling y'all what happened. I like to use the dating situation because that's what I'm familiar with the most, okay? But I, I'll use a, 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 a sister relationship to kind of help you also with that. So I have this, this friend, this young lady that I met, and I knew that I was supposed to have some level of connection with this young lady. <sighs> have this young lady, connected with the young lady, and... After talking to the young lady a couple of times, the young lady now wants to call all the time, text all the time. She wants to go out and do stuff together. And I, I'm, I don't, I'm, yeah, no. I don't want to do that. I don't see that for us. You are a distant friend. I, I'm sorry. I think a lot of times, too, we don't want to hurt people's feelings, so we'll do things that we know we're not really feeling, but we'll do it for the sake of. Baby, let me tell you something. 2020 taught me I'm not going out to dinner with nobody, that I'm not, I'm not going out paying, spending no unnecessary money on nobody that's not pouring into my life. I'm not doing it. I'm not going out to kiki and caca with you. I can kiki and caca by myself. I'm telling you, many of us are, we are connected to people that are not pouring into our lives or we are connected to people that are pulling us down. And this is the reason why you can't go and do what God has called you to do. There are quality connections that God wants you to be connected to, but you can't see those connections because you're so caught up in here. I'm going to tell you another thing he told me. He said, Jacina, the reason why, he said, in particularly men, because I, I started to pray for this person. I first of all repented and asked God to please forgive me because he clearly showed me, you were in this person's life. You all were supposed to be friends. And at the time, I, you know, I don't want no friends. I still don't even want them, but I get it, God. I didn't want no friends, no guy friends. I want my husband, my best friend. I don't want no guy friends. And God was saying, no, no, no. I'm trying to teach you how to have a friend, a platonic relationship with someone that you can talk to every now and then. Maybe y'all could go out every blue moon or whatever. He said, but I'm trying to teach you how to not take things to the next level until I show you their intentions. Whoa. Shall I show you their heart towards you and with me? If you don't know their heart, like some of these people you all put moving and, and, and placing in these positions, you ain't even been with them long enough to even know what their heart is towards you, what their heart is towards God, what are their intentions towards you. Some people come into your life and all they want to do, baby, I put a post up the other day and I meant that thing. You think these are your supporters. They're not, they're, they're not there to support you. They're not there to help you. They're not, they're not there because they love you. They're there because they they're tolerating you. It's something that they want from you. It ain't about you. It's what they want from you. And a lot of you are connected to people that just want stuff from you. They don't want you. They want your stuff. Whatever that is. <laughs> Baby. Whatever that stuff is, they want it. And if you do not have a relationship with the Father, if you are in a situation with the Father, when these people come, you're not going to be able to recognize them. You're not going to recognize what they're coming to do. I know you think you are, but you're not. You gotta have a prayer. Baby, you gotta have a prayer life in this season. We cannot be out here just connecting with people, talking about, you know, oh, well, she good friends with my friend. Baby, don't mean she gonna be good friends with you. Just because they come into your life does not mean that you connect to them in these higher positions. No, you gotta consult God. God, why is this person here? And am I to... First of all, am I to connect to them? Who sent you? Why are you here? And is, is there supposed to be a connection? We don't ask them questions. I'm telling you, most of us get up and live our life, whatever, whatever 
It's like a box of chocolate. Whatever chocolate I, whatever I pick today, that's what I, that's what it is. So whatever the day brings me, that's what. You better get yourself together and start being more intentional about your life. I am learning, seeing. I am just being. When I tell you. This walk that I'm having with the Lord right now about being intentional about him and being intentional about myself, baby, he's been showing me cut them off. Baby, I done went in my phone. I done deleted some people. I had somebody uh, text me the other day, this past weekend. Hey, how you doing? I was thinking about you. Well, baby, I ain't been thinking about you because I don't even know who you are. You done been deleted. And if I can't, if you have no name in my phone, first of all, if you don't have no picture, you really, you really probably not about to get no response. But if you don't have a name in my phone, no name comes up, baby, I don't respond to that. You, you can leave a message. It is time out for us just connecting with people, just to be connecting with people. I would rather have five good friends, good solid friends, than 25 raggedy ones any day. Everybody that says they're your friend, they are not your friend. You know what else God told me to do? I'm going to tell you this and then I'm out. God said, Jacina, this is what I want you to do. I also want you to write down your definition of what a friend is. I want you to write down your definition of what love is. And I want you to write down your definition of what a life partner is. I need you to write down those three definitions. And the reason I need you to write down those definitions is because those three, those three relationships, they are going to be extremely important in your life. When you connect to somebody, listen to me because this is the, the rest of this is downloading as I'm speaking. He's giving it to me as I'm speaking to you. So this is a revelatory word. This is a rhema word, right? So God is saying to us, when you write down your definition of friend, your definition of love, and your definition of a life partner. What you then need to do is you need to start looking at the people that you're connected with to see if they display, produce, exhibit those qualities. Isn't it something that we know that we do not like liars, but we will, we will, we will stay connected to a person that is? I don't like people that are that are not people of their word. I can't. I can't. If you say you're gonna do something, you need to do it. If you cannot do it, you need to be honest that you cannot do it. I can no longer hold up this this promise, this this thing that I I, I told you. I can no longer hold that. I can't. I can't um, cash in on that. When you write these, when you write down these definitions, it brings it to life. Listen, the Bible says in Habakkuk 2, 2 through 3, you got to write the vision, you got to make it plain. When you begin to write, he's been dealing with, dealing with me about that because I'm, I'm I'll type something up in a minute because I like the way typed stuff looks. It looks orderly. It looks good. You know, my handwriting has changed over the years. It used to be beautiful, but now it's just, uh, and I know what it is. It's because I don't write. I don't, I haven't strengthened that skill. It's gotten very weak. God told me and confirmed it through uh, Pastor Travis Wing this morning on their prayer call, um, which is online. So if you want to watch it, it was excellent. It was about your calling and your purpose. I highly recommend that you listen to it. He was talking about writing things down. And, and how writing things down brings things alive. And I believe it. Just like when I read the, when I read this Bible, instead of reading it on an electronic device, it brings the word alive. It, 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 something happens when I touch these pages. When, when I start writing and highlighting, something happens in me, right? And so when you write down these definitions, what you're doing is you're saying, this is what's important to me. And whoever gets, whoever is connected to me, they need to house these qualities, these characteristics. Not that they will be perfect because they won't, but they will have deposits of these in their life. 
especially those things that you you deem like these these are high on my list because too many of us are being connected with people that we are not supposed to be connected to in those particular positions there are even people that you kept as a stranger they're supposed to be close to you but because you couldn't discern that you have them here when they're supposed to be here there are also people that you try to get too close to too fast you, you try to get too close too fast I'm a witness I tried to get too close too fast and what happened was it caused an issue let me tell you how you know it caused the issue uh, repeat those three things absolutely Sharon hey sis so the first thing is you need to write down God is saying please write down one the definition of love the definition of a friend and the definition of a life partner what do those things mean to you that's the first part of that right the second part of that is you're going to look for them in the people that you're connected to. Those people that God tells you to bring closer, like they're not out here as strangers, they're not out here as acquaintances, but if he says bring them into the friend zone, you then need to have conversations with them. You're welcome. You then need to have conversations with them and you need to say to them, now what does, depending on what type of relationship it is so let's say me and sharon god brought sharon into it we came into each other's lives sharon is now a stranger if god continues to bring us into each other's lives or if something clicks like that that happened with me and my 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 best friend lillian me and my best friend sonia me and me and me and my my close friend tara me and shanae like it just clicked for us like instantly we clicked that's a tall tale sign this person this 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 person is somebody i need to immediately go into prayer about because i believe that this person she and i he and i have it with some things here i believe they're supposed to be in my life not only for a long term but in a closer in a closer position does that make sense Am I making sense? So then when this person, when this person comes into your life, especially the Lillians in your life, the Sonyas, the Shanae's, the Taras, to my, the, my sister Terry, when those people come into your life, you then need to ask them the same question. So what does a friend look like to you? The reason why, let me ask you first, real quick. Why do you think I'm asking? Why do you think you're going to ask the person that? Let me just give you a moment. Let me give you a moment. Why are you going to ask them that? Why are you going to ask them what does love mean to them? Why are you going to ask them what does a life partner mean to them? I know that's kind of a long question, right? I just kind of want to know what, what, what your thoughts are. Because when you're asking them these questions, what you're doing is you want to see if you're like-minded. Oh, that's good, Daddy. Oh, my goodness. This is what the Holy Spirit just said. Many of us are unequally old. Good gracious, that's good. On. Come on. People view things different. That's right, Andrea. To me, it reduces hurt and it about being on the same accord. Come on, Sharon. That's it. If you are honest with yourself, if the person, remember, remember that person that I told you to get in your mind? If that person that came to your mind, if the last taste in your mouth with that person is hurt, is disappointment, is some type of pain, 
something, shame, guilt, if whatever it is, if it's some type of negative emotion, you, you put that person in the wrong place, or you tried to put them in a, you tried to put them in a place that they were not supposed to be in. You tried to make it this, and God said, I never told you to make it this. It was supposed to be this. So what happens is, when you, when you put the person in the wrong place, what you're doing is you're setting yourself up to be hurt. This is why a lot of people, especially men, they don't want to get married again. Because they feel like, oh, you know, Kim hurt me, and I ain't never trusted no woman again. Well, that was Kim. Kim did that. And more than likely, there was something that happened for you and Kim, with you and Kim, that caused that to come about. I feel like sometimes God will allow something to happen to sever that thing. Mm-mm. Before this gets too, too, uh, mm-mm. And you fussing and crying and hollering and screaming, God, I want to die. You praying to God to bring back the thing that he's trying to take away. Baby, make it make sense. Make it make sense, please. Mm, make it make sense, because it don't. You whining and crying to God to, to, to bring something back to you that's hurting you? What? Come on here. Stop this foolishness. Now, at some point, we got to grow up and do better. Loves to say, when you, when you know better, you do better. It's lies. It's a bunch of lies. You know you don't. You just keep doing whatever, whatever your patterns are. That's a word. Whatever your patterns are, that's what you're going to fall back on. You know doggone well you ain't supposed to be with that joker. But you keep going back. And then you want to pray and ask God to get them right. No, you need to get right and get gone and let that joker go on and do what he needs to do. I'll give you a testimony about that. Met this amazing guy. Ama when I tell you I know that man loves me, baby. He loved him from J.C. and my Lisa Hunter. But he was in a situation shit with God. He didn't have his life together. He was living with his dad. He didn't have, he needed to get his life together. He had a job, well he didn't have a job for a while, then he, he moved and things started looking up and he got a job, but he still didn't have a relationship with God. He still, you know, needed a place. I need you to get you together first before I can ever come along and be an asset in your life. Let me leave this little little snippet, this little nugget with somebody. Because mm, I feel this in my spirit. Let me leave this with you before I go. Stop trying to do spousely things with people that are friends. I don't even care if you're in a relationship. I don't care if you're engaged. There are some things that you cannot do in a platonic relationship that you can do when it becomes romantic, God's way. Let me say that, romantic God's way. Cause some of y'all out here romancing and, and slipping and sliding and dipping and diving and that ain't your person and that ain't your spouse. Get that together. But what I'm saying is we have to be more careful, we have to be more mindful, we have to be more intentional about our relationships and our connections. Sis, sir, just because they come in your life, they're a Christian, they look good, they smell good, they like good, everything is good, does not mean that they are your person. That may not be your king, your queen, who God has called you to be with. That may not be your, your, your life partner. They may be coming to teach you something that you will need to, to walk out with your life partner. That's what I've been noticing a lot. Like, these last two gentlemen that I, you know, w was, um, that were pursuing me, that, you know, I was seeing whatever you want to call it, it didn't work out. It didn't work out. But they are amazing gentlemen. They are amazing guys. That's just not what, God did not tell me this is your spouse. And what I did was I began to pray for them fervently. Show me. Expose, reveal, remove. Show me who they are. 
Show me who sent them. Show me why they are here. Show me. Am I supposed to connect to them on another level? When God said no, I pulled back. I, I start pulling back. Start pulling back. Because what I won't do is I will not be responsible for damaging you because I put you in the wrong position. I'm going to leave this last illustration. Man, this is so good. It's almost like, you know, you got a glass vase and you put the glass vase, it, it's this big glass vase and you put it on this table. And the table, let's say it's in your living room and there's a lot of traffic that's going through your living room, right? And one day, Maybe your grandkids are over and they're running around playing and one of them mess, uh, accidentally hits the table and knocks the vase on the floor and you go ballistic. Why you broke my vase? You should have broke my vase. Da -da 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 -da. You're getting on my nerves. Sit down. I mean, you just going berserk, right? You have no reason to get upset with that baby because you put that vase in that high traffic area. It was going to eventually happen. It was going to get broken. That's what happens when we put people in the wrong position. When we put people in the wrong position, we put our heart in the position to be broken, to be hurt. When you start looking at this person as, oh, this is about to be my so-and-so, or we about to be besties, or we about to be married, oh, this is about to be my wife, my whatever, my husband. When you do that to yourself before God gives you that, that that revelation, what you're doing is you're putting yourself in a position to break your own heart. Don't do that. You gotta ask them. Who sent this person? Why are they here? What are your plans? What are your thoughts, plans? What 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 are your intentions, God, for this relationship? Show me. And then act accordingly. Amen? That it, Betty? Amen. I hope that helped. I hope that helped. Um, Got to be intentional about these relationships, okay? Because relationships, they, they help us to grow or they help us to, um, I'm telling you, they're going to be like weeds or they're going to be like fertilizer. They're going to help you grow or they're going to suck the life out of you, right? And so um, it's a hard lesson that I have been, I've had to learn and that God has, has shown me, like, he'll, he'll, he'll do the rewind button in my life and he'll show me this is, this is what happened with that. This is why this happened. And this is why this happened. And again, I, ha I had to repent and I had to ask God to forgive me. Forgive me for, um, you know, the way that I behaved in this situation or didn't or, or for my lack of faith in what you want to do in this relationship or for me praying for something that was only um, hindering my walk with you. You know what I mean? We gotta talk to God. He's listening all the time. He's ready to talk to you. But he wants to know that he's invited. For some of us inviting, but we ain't inviting. We don't allow him to speak. Right. All right. Listen, I love you. I appreciate you for hanging out with me today. We'll be right back here on Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. doing the same thing. Having these heart-to-heart -heart conversations with God so that he can talk to us about life, faith, relationships, purpose, whatever it is that's on his heart. I'm grateful that he uses me as a mouthpiece to, to speak. So I hope you'll join me on next Monday. Listen, I'm having a vision casting workshop um, on January the 28th. The cost of the workshop is $50 until January 20th. After January 20th, it's going to be $75. And the person that invites the most people will get a prize, child. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get a prize. 
So if you invite the most people, they register and show up, boom, it's going to be a blessing to you. Um, there will be light refreshments that are served. Listen, you want to be, if you're having a, if, if you're struggling with, with, with the vision for your life, purpose, trying to figure out how to plan your life, what God has in store for you this year, you need to be at this workshop. Three hours, 10 to 1. You can invest $50 in yourself for three hours to be able to get a better picture of what God wants to do in this year. I believe you, you deserve it. You owe it to yourself, right? So that's January 28th. All of the information is on my page. Please feel free to go there. Also, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please, please subscribe, right? I would love it if you would. It would make me so very, very happy. I'm trying to get to, to a thousand subscribers by the end of the month. We're halfway there. So I'm only at 163, I believe. I need your help. I cannot do it without you. So if you enjoyed today's broadcast, I need your help. Jacina Speaks, go to YouTube, Jacina Speaks, and um, like, share subscribe all right all right father we thank you for this word we pray that we will hide it in our heart that we may not sin against you i pray that we will we will uh, implement that which you have spoken to us on today that we won't just be hearers but that we will be doers of your word in jesus name may the lord bless you and keep you may he make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace i pray that he will be gracious to you I pray that God will cover, keep, and protect you, you and your family. And I pray that God will put a fire up under you to be more intentional about him. Yes, a fire. In Jesus' name. I love you guys. Have an amazing weekend. Do something fun this weekend, all right? Get out there, do something, and um, enjoy yourself, all right? I love you guys. I'll see you on Monday. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.